Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, uh, we've just gotten the, I get it over here, the new light objects um, lens in. So this is an 18 millimeter zinc selenium uh, mirror. It's supposed to have a focal point of 50.8 millimeters. So, what I decided to do was uh, set up the test the test bench again a little bit to take a look at um, the performance of the lens. So we have the existing lens from that came with the laser printer, and as if you recall, this is supposed to be a five centimeter lens or basically 50 millimeters. And again, I have the focal point. Uh, the focal point is measuring really at about 40 millimeters or four centimeters. Um, which is interesting. Also, I'll see if I can't zoom up on it. And then also, I've got the infrared camera set up once again to take some pictures of the uh, exit people. Now, basically above, uh, as mentioned before in the last video, I have a, a 100 watt halogen light that's in the ceiling. It's approximately five feet above uh, this lens. Somewhat of a close guesstimate. Uh, I'll also splice in, these are going to be still, so I'll see if I can't splice them into the video um, from the infrared camera of what, what what it looks like up close in the infrared light. So, just to, took an image there. So, I'm going to zoom in with the regular camera, so hang on a second. So, now I've zoomed back in, again, on the standard lens, and it's, I think you can probably see it here. There, there's a halo... And then there's a very sharp uh, exit point, but the exit point does have, um, in optical terms, aberrations to it. It's not uh, a perfect dot or close to perfect dot. Uh, it, it has some spikes and etc. So uh, the the lens on this whole the whole lens assembly itself is not um, that nice of a lens assembly. It appears to be scarred on the surfaces and things like that. I don't know if this is going to impact it in infrared uh, wavelengths. Uh, you can definitely see it invisible, so let's back off a second again. So uh, we backed off for a second, so what I want to do is remove this. And I've, I did. I have placed the rubber glove on just for protection to hold the lens because I don't want my fingerprints on it now. Unfortunately, this did not, this came wrapped in what looks like um, a zigzag paper, a rolling paper, um, I don't know if that's what it is or not, but it's definitely not a, um, the fancy little box it shows on the website, I don't know if that's an issue or not. The general lens, um, hold it up to the camera here, so looks better shape than, um, same color configuration obviously. Uh, is the other one, so let me set that one back down, then let's take this one back out of the, take it out of the holder, and you can see, let's see if we can see some of the, I don't know if you can, so this is the original one, in the um, 3D printed holder, if you will, um, and there's definitely some scarring on this side, I don't know if you can see that or not in the camera, but it's definitely not pretty. Now this one, you can feel the con con convex and concave. So you can clearly see, let's see if this, which way is the camera, it's over here. So you can clearly see the, the, the convex and concaveness of this lens. So this is uh, interesting. And the mirror, ability, the mirror ability, I don't know if you can say it that way. It's far different. So let's let's see how this one performs. Interesting. So we had it set this one at four. Now this is supposed to it should be higher. Because now that's about a little higher than 5, so it's closer to 60. Now, 
Now I would say Now the interesting part is I'm about 50 50 I'm growing skeptical of this being a good way to to measure the mirror because I'm at I'm at about the same focal point of about 4 centimeters about 40 millimeters to the top of this lens and it's very clear that um you know in in the uh in the sales material it's saying that this lens focuses at 50.8 so um i'm a little bit skeptical i'm trying to just focus on this dot I'm just taking a look. There does seem to be some center aberrations. The hate. Halo uh, itself seems to be um, smaller. So let's see if I can actually. figure out let me zoom up on this so you can see a little bit better I'm not sure if that worked out the best but let's see is the exit pupil looks to be about three millimeters um, I mean just rough order of magnitude measured so um, I guess the, the, you know, proof will be in the pudding, um, when we go to cut, but, but the piece I'm finding interesting is, is again, the one video I was pointed to on the internet, um, indicated that you could find the focal length of this lens by moving this up or down in, in optical light, and I'm not so sure that that's the case, because... Again, I've got the sharpest focus right now with the top of the, with the top of the lens at 40 millimeters, and actually this is this is down further um, than this this existing lens. So let's kind of put the two side side by side. I wonder if I can get um, let's see if I can back this off a little bit. And I want to be able to see if I can get both of these. I'm going to zoom you back out. Yeah, I wanted to zoom you back out a second so you could see what I'm doing. Uh, this recording me up. Um, because I'm going to try to get to... Hmm, I didn't like that. I mean, the batteries are starting to give out on me in this one. Um, yeah, there we go. We got we got an image out of it. One of the things between the two, the new lens seems to have a little bit darker, more orange hue. With this one, the older one has more of a yellowish hue. Um, there still does seem to be similar aberrations between the two, and again, I'll post, I'll, I'll interweave the, um, uh, stills from the infrared into the video. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm not sure quite what to make out of this. Again, this is clearly not 
showing me uh, 50.8. So my focal point in optic invisible light is clearly um, basically 40. It's a little bit less than this other uh, lens. So anyways, uh, I think the next thing is to do is to put this in the laser cutter and run a test cut with it. Um, I think I am going to adjust it. I'm not going to follow this measurement, but again, adjust it to, um, uh, what was I want to say here? I want to adjust it to, um, uh, 50.8 millimeters and see what we got. Okay, so we're at the laser cutter now. We've got the uh, 18 new 18 millimeter zinc selenium lens installed in the light object's head. We got the acrylic uh, installed. Uh, I've adjusted the bed um, to a height where 50.8 millimeters comes to about the center thickness of this acrylic. And uh, just a little point, one of the, the pieces I do to kind of cheat a little bit in my alignment is you notice this marking here so I marked this to be my alignment point um, to cut the next I'm gonna cut a heart out that matches this one uh, over here so just kind of an easy way to do it so um, as promised in the last video I'm gonna see how the new lens does cutting this so let's go ahead and cut this and then I'll come back and see what we have So we're back. We've cut the heart out, and I think it's actually mixed news <clears throat> because it it took me I think technically the same number of cuts three to cut this out. But the problem I had with this was the um, the, the the while I cut through the plastic kept melting back um, and holding it in. So. Uh, I don't know quite how to set it because it definitely burned. I, I think it burned a bit hotter. Um, and you can kind of see, I don't know if I can get this to the camera. This this has cleaner, uh, cleaner sides than um, the other one. But what happened is, I don't know if you can kind of see it in here, is the plastic remelted or the acrylic remelted instead of burning away and kept holding it in there so I mean I actually had to pop it out with my fingers it just didn't fall like the other one fell out um, so I, I don't know maybe I actually have to turn the power down I ran it at the same power as the other one um, maybe I, I'll have to try it with some lesser power the one thing I can tell you is the um, the curve of the beam is is better with this lens there's just no question about it the the cleanness of this cut um and again you can see where some of the plastic the plastic kind of remelted back down here um and and held it in it wasn't all the way around it was just in certain spots that the plastic remelted and held it in um but and again if i feel along the inside and again i'm not sure the camera can catch it but this is actually rather rough, kind of like you took a little drill and drilled it thousands of times all the way around, where this is pretty smooth. Um, so, I mean, the kerf definitely seems to be better uh, with this new lens. I, I, I definitely think adding the new lens is a good thing. I'm going to have to try to play around. I think actually part of my problem with this I made it too hot. I'm going to try some more cuts and I'll do some future videos on um, how it comes out. But the more and more I'm thinking about it, the more and more I'm thinking I've got to turn down the power actually a little bit to prevent it. Also, I don't think I'm getting enough out of my air assist really to um, do the job. I've got, an, I've got an airbrush air compressor. I'm going to add a reserve tank to it. So for cuts, it builds up pressure and... Um, rather than just free-flowing. So anyways, uh, hopefully this, this helped. We got the light object lens in. 
Uh, for 29 bucks, definitely a thumbs up. I give it uh, well worthwhile, far better than the other one. And I think it, it, this, this between all the work I've done, um, this machine is actually now relatively productive. Uh, very happy with it, with the changing of the bed. I've now got this adjusted. I've got the mirrors adjusted. The laser finder works nice, or locator works very nice. Um, so all in all, very happy with this machine. I mean, uh, all said, um, I paid four four sixty five for it shipped from the U.S. It was a little bit more expensive than having it shipped from China, about a hundred bucks. But uh, I thought the risk on the laser tube and that was a little bit better. And also, I've got the over here is the the digital setup rather than the meter setup. I don't know if that accounts for anything. Uh, it does have the newer M2. I think it's the M2 Nano board. Um, so I don't know if that makes more money or not. Uh, but then, you know, $30 for the mirror, the head. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm into this thing for about five and a half, maybe. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to say five and a half, maybe closer to six, buying the, um, uh, throwing in the compressor. The compressor was like 40, 50 bucks. And so the compressor was 40, 50 bucks. This head assembly was uh, 16, 17 bucks. Um, the lens was 30 bucks. And I had the laser laying around, and I printed that piece. Um, the screen was about ten bucks, but I've got actually a whole another screen, so it cost me about five bucks. I cut this in half. The vent modification was free, and the back was all plastic. I had so, yeah, roughly somewhere between five and a half, less than six that I have into it, and um, it does pretty good. And I can do probably ten by ten, a ten by ten area, pretty reliably. Um, so again, very happy with it. So if this helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming. Uh, since I've now got this dialed in, I want to start working on actually doing projects rather than working on this thing. I want to start making things, right? So, uh, I already have a number of ideas. Bob from, uh, I like to make stuff has given me a few. So, uh, look for those coming, um, in a bit. So anyways, cheers. See you in the next video. Thumbs up.